Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Leviticus 7. Likewise, this is the law of the trespass offering. It is most holy. In the place where they kill the burnt offering, the brazen altar, shall they kill the trespass offering. And the blood thereof shall be sprinkled round about the altar, all the way around the altar. And he shall offer, of, offer it all the fat thereof, the rump and the fat that covereth the inwards. The two kidneys and the fat that's on them, which is by the flanks, and the call that's above the liver, with the kidneys, it, sh it shall he take away. And the priest shall burn them upon the altar for an offering made by fire, hell, unto the Lord. No one else but the Lord. You can't offer sacrifices anything but to God. Mary can't do it. Angels can't do it. It's a trespass offering. Again, trespass is when you cross that line. Every male among the priests shall eat thereof. Boy, God's so prejudiced. What would the modern Bible say? It shall be eaten in the holy place. It is most holy. As the sin offering is, so is the trespass offering. But they're one and the same. There is one law for them. The priest that maketh atonement therewith shall have it. The offering becomes the priest. It's his. He can dine on it. And the priest that offers any man's burnt offering, even the priest shall have to himself the skin of the burnt offering which he has offered now that skin let's see what what we go let's go to Genesis 321 Genesis 321 Adam and Eve sinned they trespass against God Three twenty one. Three twenty. I'm in. Wait a minute. Hold on. I'm in two. Three twenty one. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothe them. That's the first death in the Bible. It's chapter four that Abel's killed by Cain. The first animal that is killed, which we believe would be the lamb. Or the Lamb of God would take away the sin of the world. And it's mentioned coats of skin for two sinners that had trespassed against God because God said, Thou shalt not eat of that fruit. And there's the skins to cover them. So when we run over here to the trespass offering, the fire, the burnt offering made by a priest, and he gets the skin thereof. I'm assuming that would bring you back to Adam and Eve in the, in the garden after their sin. To remind you what sin does. Skin of the burnt offering which he hath offered. All the meat offering. There's the meat offering. That is bacon in the oven. And all that is dressed in a frying pan. 
in the pan. So there's oven, baking in the oven, there's the frying pan, and a pan. Shall be the priest that offer. How many times have we discussed this already? Three or four times. This is important. Those Levites, they serve that tabernacle. They do not get an inheritance in the land. Outside the offerings, they get no money. God is not going to throw them down the paycheck. And when you've got a faithful, we are priests, Revelation chapter 1. When you've got a faithful pastor of your church and he's doing the work of the Lord and praying and offering a prayer to the sweet saving of the Lord and he's doing things for the, for the people. You're to reward him with the best. And then we're gonna we're gonna get later on that what he gets, the priest gets, he's also to die. There are true Bible believing, Christ honoring, serving pastors in the world today. And the congregation are starving them out. He's got the most broken car in the assembly. And he's the one who's got to go to the hospitals. He's the one who's got to go through all these runs. And he's got the unreliable car that he praises God for. These priests don't have nothing. And the land that they do have, it's given amongst the children of Israel. Well, here, here's your portion. So this meat offering. Remember, he takes a handful, he puts it in the fire, and the rest is his. Every meat offering mingled with oil and dry shall all the sons of Aaron have, one as much as another. So they all get paid by the offerings. And there's a lot of trespassing. There's a lot of sin offering being made. And this is the law of the sacrifice of peace offerings, which he shall offer unto the Lord. Now we get to the peace offering. Thanksgiving, we're going to see. Oh, well, what a great month to talk about Thanksgiving. If he offer it for a Thanksgiving, then he shall offer with the sacrifice of Thanksgiving. It's a sacrifice. What's a sacrifice of Thanksgiving? You've got to give something up. Unleavened cakes mingled with oil, one. And unleavened wafers anointed with oil, two. And cakes mingled with oil. Of fine flour, fried. Those are your fried dough in the Bible. So, cakes mingled with oil, unleavened wafers anointed with oil, and cakes mingled with oil. God seems to like oil. God likes salt. Besides the cakes, he shall offer for his offering leavened bread with the sacrifice of thanksgiving of his peace offering. Unleavened cakes mingled with oil, unleavened wafers anointed with oil, cakes mingled with oil, and Lord God, you got to be wrong because you just said leavened bread. It is very profound the use of this leaven. Christ is our peace offering, Ephesians 2.13. Any thanksgiving for peace must first of all be pre presented to him. You must present him, Jesus, and be presented to Jesus your thanksgiving. Jesus Christ is without leaven. In verse 12 we have this in type, and so leaven is excluded. Jesus Christ. I am the bread. I am the unleavened bread. I am the sinless perfection. The unleavened cakes mingled with oil. Olive oil. Type of the Holy Spirit. Wafers. What do you use when you take the Lord's Supper? Wafers. Unleavened wafers. So, in verse 13, it is the offers, offerer, me, who gives thanks for his participation in the peace. I have peace thanks to Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for giving me peace. The Holy Spirit, for the fruit of the Holy Spirit, one of them is peace. 
I have that peace. And Lord God, I am thankful that you've given me peace amongst trials and tribulations of my life. But what's 11? Lord, I'm still a sinner. I'm not your son. Your son is sinless perfection. I don't know how long it will be after I walk away and thanking and praising you that I'm going to do something wrong. It won't be long. So in that sacrifice of peace offering thanksgiving, God gives us Jesus Christ and he gives us a sinful man. Now, Amos 4, 5. Let's go there. With that, we can look at the scriptures and interpret the scriptures with scriptures. Amos 4, 5. God's angry with Israel. We'll start verse 1. Amos 4 1. Hear this word, ye kind of Bashan, that are in the mountains of Samaria, which oppress the poor, against the law, which crush the needy, against the law, which say to their masters, Bring and let us drink. The Lord God has sworn by his holiness that lo, the day shall come unto you that he will take you away with hooks and your posterity with fish hooks. I think God's angry with them. He shall go out at the breaches, every cow at which is before her, and ye shall cast them into the palace, saith the Lord. I think God's mad. Come to Bethel and transgress. You better not. God's being sarcastic. You want a verse for God to say, go ahead and sin. There it is. At Gilgal, multiply thy transgressions. Go ahead and sin. And bring your sacrifices every morning and your tithes after three years. You have angered God. You are not in good standing with God. And offer sacrifice of thanksgiving with leaven. Now, if you read that without Leviticus, you say, whoa. Looks like, all right, go ahead and just sin. No. God is telling you, you come to me with that thanksgiving offering that you're reading about right now and you come as a sinner you are and proclaim and publish the free offering for this like if you O ye children of Israel say the Lord you're sinning come to me as a sinner you are and now bring Jesus Christ the bread of life when Jesus spoke about John chapter 6 I am the bread of life they ought to ran over here So you see where they get in the Catholic Church wafers. They get a verse 12, unleavened wafers. We also take this part in our Lord's Supper. Because we acknowledge the fact that Jesus Christ is sinless perfection, unleavened. And we come to him at the table, however the service is done. We come to, and listen, I'm a sinner, and it's because of the blood and because of the, your bread, your flesh, the wine, the new wine. Am I saved? And Lord God, I'm to remember what you've done for me. The, the tribulation, the trials, the, the punishments, the, the harsh treatment, the brutality that you suffered and died and shed your blood until you come. And how long after the service will I be in sin again. So there's eleven bread. That's me. The peace offering of Jesus Christ and the bread that you know what I'm a sinner. Because God's always saying no leaven, no leaven, no leaven, no leaven, no leaven, and boom, there's leaven. And there's gonna be another mention of leaven bread when you get to the Pentecost. And we run to that, you'll see a bunch of sinners that come to Jesus Christ at the preaching of Peter. That'd be interesting. 
And of it, he shall offer one out of the whole oblation for a heave offering. That's lifting it up, heave, unto the Lord. And it shall be the priests that sprinkle the blood of the people. So it's their food. It's their belonging. They get to keep it. And the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offerings for thanksgiving. So you to bring your peace offering, you better bring with thanksgiving. Shall be eaten the same day that it is offered. He shall not leave any of it until morning. Now, I don't know when George Washington proclaimed the Thanksgiving, I don't know if he ran to the Bible, but why is it on Thanksgiving that one day we set apart to give God thanks and we spread out a table before him to eat? But if the sacrifice of his offering be a vow, I swear, or I'm going to do this, or a voluntary offering, I'm going to give it to God because I want to, it shall be eaten the same day, that he offers his sacrifice. And on the morrow also the remainder of it shall be eaten. And our Thanksgiving meals leave us with leftovers for the next day. Isn't that interesting? You are sitting at a table with food before you. And you are to thank God for that food. And everything he has done for you. And there's no football, and there's no, oh, i got to go sit and sleep out at the store tonight. Now, you can't take it all away, because look at verse 17. But the remainder of the flesh on the sacrifice on the third day shall be burnt with fire. Listen, I have had leftover for Thanksgiving meal three, four days, five days, even a week. So you can't press it all away, but... Any of the food that's left over the third day, you're to put it in the fire. <coughs> the leftovers on the third day are not to be eaten. And if any of the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offering be eaten at all on the third day, you can't apply this to a thanksgiving but for us, it shall not be accepted. Neither shall it be imputed unto him that offered it. So, my assumption, which you can throw in a garbage can, is whatever they're eating here before the Lord, it must taste good. Because in order for the third day, oh, I'm so hungry for that. And God says, no, you better not. And it leaves that obligation that someone might eat it on the third day. I mean, let's say, let's say, okay, Thanksgiving, you gave me cranberries, juice, whatever it's called. I'm not eating it on Thanksgiving. Uh-uh. And there's any left over in the refrigerator on the second day. Uh-uh. No way. And definitely if it's on the third day, no way. I ain't eating that junk. Now, first day, you give me apple pie with, with Cool Whip. Ooh, yummy, yummy. Second day, there's some more uh, uh, pie left. You want more? Oh, yeah, I'll have more. But the third day, ooh, that pie. No, you can't have it. Oh, come on. Got to be something about that meat offering that tastes good. God says, no on the third day. Neither shall it be imputed to him that offered it. It shall be an abomination. Eating that leftovers on the third day is abomination as, as a man sleeping with a man in sexual relations. The soul that eateth of it shall bear his iniquity. Ooh, I wouldn't do that. Because it says it's most holy. It's holy. But the soul that eateth of the flesh of the sacrifice of peace offerings that pertaineth unto the Lord Jehovah, having his uncleanness, he's unclean upon him, even that soul shall be cut off from his peace. He takes part and eats this peace offering, and he is unclean. Man, straight to hell. Cut off. You're no longer considered a Jew. Moreover, the soul that shall touch any unclean thing, a dead animal, men's poop, a dog, a dog's unclean, as the uncleanness of man, the bathroom, issue, blood, 
or any unclean beast, again, cat, dog, pig, or any abominable unclean thing, and eat of the flesh of the sacrifice of peace offering which pertaineth unto the Lord, even that soul shall be cut off from his people. You better think clean. You better think clean. And you better be thankful for God. You just just not get oh, we're just having because it's Thanksgiving Day. I wonder how many families in America under Thanksgiving don't give any thanks and don't mean to have thanks. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, Children of Israel, ye shall eat no manner of fat. <laughs> Now, if I was an Old Testament Jew, I'd be in trouble because I love pork. And I love pork chops with big old fat on it. I can't have pork and I can't have fat. Of ox or of sheep or of goat. I mean, meals have the fat in it. God says, nope. So not only do you have a restriction of seafood without fins or scales, you have a restriction of pork, and they have a restriction of no fat. And the fat of the beast that dieth of itself, it kills over on its own. The fat of that which is torn of beasts, lions have got a hold of it. David said one time he plucked an ear out of a lion. May be used in any other use, but ye shall no wise eat of it. You can, I don't know if you can still use the sheep for wool. If you got an animal that's got a hide or skin, you can use that skin, but you can't eat it. For whosoever eateth the fat of beasts, of which men offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, you go up to that brazen over and you grab a piece of fat. You know, what's the expression? Chew the fat? You know what bacon is? It's meat and fat. It's also a pig. Aren't you glad you're under grace? Made by fire of the Lord, even that soul that eateth it shall be cut off from his people. You're no longer a Jew. You're no under, under law. You're no longer one of God's people. You're shut out. For fat. We preach about, you know, everyone, you know, adultery and murder, adultery and murder, and, and look, look at this. Moreover, ye shall eat no manner of blood. That's before the law, that's during the law, and that's in the book of Acts, during the church age. No blood eating. Whether it be of a fowl or a beast in any of your dwellings. Now, it's already taken granted from Genesis, you're not to eat the blood of man. You're not to eat the blood of animals. So steak tartare and those other stuff like that. It's forbidden. It's forbidden in the church age in the book of Acts. And they say strangled and keep from blood. Whosoever so it be that eateth any manner of blood, even that soul shall be cut off from his people. He said, well, what do you do with the meat you have today? Bow your head and say, Lord God, I... I don't know what's in this meat, but I pray you bless it. And to your honor and glory, Paul says that we can thank God for it. Now, if you were under the law and you weren't sure that there was blood in that meat, didn't we read he's guilty even though ignorance? And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, He that offers the sacrifice of his peace offerings unto the Lord, shall bring his oblation unto the Lord of the sacrifice of his peace offerings. Okay, that's what's this one? Let's see if I can type of this one. Oh, honey, you take the kids and all that to church. I'm staying home or I'm going fishing. Well, oh, here's some money to put in the plate. Absolutely not. You bring the service to the Lord. You bring the money. You bring your wife to church. You bring your children to church. You bring your peace offerings. No one else. His own hands shall bring the offering of the Lord made by fire. How many churches out there where the woman brings? Supposed to be the man. Supposed to be you. 
the fat of the breast. It shall it shall he bring that the breast may be waved. That's waving back and forth for a wave or for, That's the best meat. The breast. You go to a chicken place, they'll charge you more if you want the breast. And the priest shall burn the fat upon the altar, but the breast shall be Aaron's in his... Look at that, he gets the breast. He gets the best. He gets the good meat. And then sometimes he, the, the priest coming home, Honey, how did you do today? Oh, we had a whole bunch of sinners today. We're going to eat for a while. Open a, open up a deli. And they could. We're going to read somewhere where it says they can do, they can sell that if they want to. We'll come across that in the law. Had a good day, many sinners. That's why God established these men. That's why God said, You're going to be paid by the people. I know they're sinners. And you haven't even got to the promised land yet. We're. We're in the wilderness right now. We're at Mount Sinai as God is writing this before Moses on Mount Sinai. He's already had enough of We have not had yet. Listen to me. We have not yet had the, the, the golden calf by, Mo, by Aaron. Moses is on Mount Sinai with God for 40 days and 40 nights. And this is what we get out of that. And the, right, uh, the priest shall burn the fat thereof, and the, the breast shall be Aaron's and his sons. And the right shoulder, another good part, shall he give unto the priest for a heave offering, get heave it up, and the sacrifice of your peace offering. He among the sons of Aaron that offer the blood of the peace offering and the fat shall have the right shoulder for his part. So let's say Abimelech, and I'm just making up a name. He takes this guy's offering, the right shoulder, goes right to him. Now we're going to see later on with Eli's sons, Lord willing. What, we're going to, what we see here is you're to burn it. Man, they're not waiting for it to burn. Don't take that three-pronged knife. Boy, I want it now. It has to be burnt first. They're getting it raw. For the way breast. And for the heave shoulder have I taken of the children of Israel from off the sacrifices of the peace offerings and have given it them to Aaron and his priests and the priests, excuse me, and unto his sons by a statute. This is a law. The law is called statute forever. This is going on into the eternity. In the millennium. From among the children of Israel. And this is the portion of, the, of anointing of Aaron. And of the anointing of his sons. Out of the offerings of the Lord. Made by fire. In the day when he is presented them. To minister unto the Lord in the priest's office. Which the Lord commanded to be given them. Of the children of Israel. In the day that he anointed them. By a statute forever throughout their generation. That's not going on today. It's going to come back some way in the tribulation period. But it's definitely coming back in the millennium. This is the law of the burnt offering. Of the meat offering. And of the sin offering. And the trespass offering. And of the consecrations. And of the sacrifice of the peace offering. Which the Lord commanded Moses in Mount Sinai. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. Well, not, not part of Numbers. No, no, not, forget. No, not Numbers at all. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus are written on the mountain where Moses is there 40 days and 40 nights. In the day that he commanded the children of Israel to offer their oblations unto the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai. And that tells you exactly where we are now. God has a way. God has a function. And all this way and function takes you to Jesus Christ. Now what do you think what happens if you mess with a couple verses here and there? Add or subtract. 
You think you're going to point to Jesus? Absolutely not. You'll take it away. 